The vice presidential debate was supposed to be the civil, sober, and serious one, waged between two traditional politicians who have been compared to sitcom dads. But Mike Pence and Tim Kaine spent 90 minutes talking over and past one another, most of it led by Kaine, who once called himself boring, but came into tonight's face-off clearly amped up. Did it work? Here's ABC's David Wright. Tonight in Virginia, the JV debate. The two men battling it out to be a heartbeat away from the presidency each made their case. Six times tonight, I have said to Governor Pence, I can't imagine how you can defend your running mate's position on one issue after the next. And in all six cases, he's refused to defend well, let's, his running let's, mate's No, no, don't put words in my mouth. Democrat Tim Kaine fashioned himself the attack dog. The thought of Donald Trump as commander-in-chief scares us to death. Forcing Republican Mike Pence to defend Trump. I can't imagine how Governor Pence can defend the insult-driven, selfish, me-first style of Donald Trump. Senator, you and Hillary Clinton would know a lot about an insult-driven campaign. It really is remarkable. Pence, poised and steady, deflected, painting the Democrats as mudslingers. The campaign of Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine has been an avalanche of insults. You, and you are Donald Trump, uh, Trump's apprentice. Uh, oh. let, let me talk about this Senator, issue. I think, of the, of I think the state I'm still on my time. Well, I think, our, isn't this a discussion? This is our yeah. open discussion. Senator, let's talk well, about this, well, the state let of me, the world. Let me interrupt you, let me interrupt you no. and finish my sentence if I can. I appreciated the you're hired, you're fired thing. Uh, Senator, you used that a whole lot, and, and I think your running mate used a lot of pre done lines. Pence was put on the spot over Donald Trump's taxes. Specifically, why hasn't he released his returns? And why did a leaked copy of his 95 return show that Trump declared nearly a billion dollar loss, potentially reducing his tax liability to zero for 18 years? He went through a very difficult time, but he used the tax code just the way it's supposed to be used, and he did it brilliantly. How do you know he that? You haven't seen a this tax because he's created a business that's worth billions of dollars today. How do you know that? And with regard to paying taxes, this whole riff about not paying taxes and people saying he didn't pay taxes for years, Donald Trump has created tens of thousands of jobs. Kane hit right back. Donald Trump started this campaign in 2014. He said, if I run for president, I will absolutely release my taxes. And his he first will. He's broken his first promise. Second, he stood on he the stage last week. He promise. He said he, he stood on the stage last week. And when Hillary said, you haven't been paying taxes, he said, that makes me smart. So it's smart not to pay for our military. It's smart not to pay for veterans. It's smart not to pay for teachers. And I guess all of us who do pay for those things, I guess we're stupid. As contentious as tonight's debate was, in all honesty, it can't really compete with the clash at the top of the ticket. In ratings alone, Clinton versus Trump round one was the Super Bowl, the highest rated debate in TV history. Tonight's contest, more like the world championship of darts. Entertaining enough, but bound to appeal to a much smaller audience. That said, consider this. Donald Trump, if elected, would be the oldest president ever. Hillary Clinton, <coughs> only a few years younger. And she's faced questions about her health. All the more reason to pay attention. Either one of these men could end up with the top job someday. Tonight, Pence did his best to channel Ronald Reagan. Uh, there they go again. Kane tried to Ronald Reagan him right back. Ronald Reagan said something really interesting about nuclear proliferation back in the 1980s. He said, the problem with nuclear proliferation is that some fool or maniac could trigger a catastrophic event. And I think that's who Governor Pence's running mate is, exactly who oh, President on. Reagan warned us about. Senator. Senator, that was even beneath you and Hillary Clinton, and that, that's pretty low. Everybody ready to win big tomorrow? Kane came into this debate with the reputation of being Mr. Nice Guy. I just want to make it very, very clear that he's trying to fuzz up what Donald Trump has said. Tonight, he did his level best to throw some sharp elbows. He's got kind of a personal Mount Rushmore. <sighs> Vladimir Putin, Kim oh, Jong-un, Muammar Gaddafi, oh, and Saddam Hussein. The game plan was to be aggressive, and he definitely was too aggressive, especially in comparison to Pence, who was trying to come across as a very calm and cool, collective sort of candidate. In one exchange, accusing Trump of being the political equivalent of a supervillain. Donald Trump believes that the world will be safer if more nations have nuclear weapons. I'd love to hear Governor Pence tell me what's so enjoyable or comical about nuclear war. Governor Pence. 
Did you work on that one a long time? Because that had a lot of really creative lines in it. Well, I'm going to uh, see if you can look, defend any of it. Look, I can defend. In the middle of the debate, Donald Trump retweeted that Kane looked like an evil crook out of the Batman movies. That is absolutely false, and you know absolutely that. Absolutely And you true. know that, Governor. Governor. It's absolutely it was, well, uh, true. For both men, this was a coming out party, the first time they'd been tested on a national stage. Although their bosses bickered plenty last week. For 30 years you've been doing it, and now you're just starting to think of solutions. Well, actually, I will bring, excuse me, I will bring back jobs. You can't bring back jobs. Well, actually, um, I have thought about this quite a bit. Richard, Richard, Richard Nixon released tax The understudies were arguably tax even tax worse. If you, you can't meet the Nixon the standard, people standard, at home cannot understand either one of you when you speak over each other. Tonight, one of the biggest clashes came over immigration. These guys, and Donald Trump has said it, deportation force. They want to go house to house, school to school, business to business, and kick out 16 million people. And I cannot it's believe, it's not I cannot believe. Pence pushed back. So Senator, we have a deportation force. It's called Immigrations and Customs Enforcement. And the Union for Immigrations and Customs Enforcement, for the first time in their history, endorsed Donald Trump to be the next president. Pence was scrupulously polite, ever the grown up. Mr. Ronald Trump Reagan has said, said a nation and... without borders is not a nation. Donald Trump is committed to restoring the borders of this nation. So, Governor... Unlike his boss, he was preternaturally calm, refusing to take the bait. Just trying to keep up with the insult-driven campaign on the other side of the I'm, table. I, you know, I'm just saying facts about your running mate. Yeah. Well, and I know you can't defend Senator, him. Senator, please, I, this I'm is happy Governor's to defend him, Senator. Don't put words in my mouth that I'm not defending him. You're not. I'm happy to defend him. Most of what you said is completely false. And the American people know that. This I'll is, run through this the list of things this where you can defend Senator, where please, you this is Governor Pence's two minutes. You had one candidate that was blatantly not telling the truth in a lot of situations. That would be Mr. Pence. And then you had the other candidate, Kane, who didn't come across likable because he kept interrupting and he kept appearing to be rude. Being a vice presidential candidate may be a thankless job. But for both men, the outcome of this debate has huge implications. The one whose boss loses will likely be waiting in the wings to run for the top job four years from now. The other will be waiting in the wings much, much closer. I'm David Wright for Nightline in New York. Our thanks to David Wright. And coming up this Sunday night, the second presidential debate. It's just five days away now, and it will be co-moderated by our own Martha Raddatz. Full team coverage right here on ABC on Sunday night.